the sciatica cause hip and groin pain. Sciatica refers to sciatic nerve pain, which can be felt anywhere along the sciatic nerve's extensive pathway. The sciatic nerve starts in the low back and extends down the back of the hip, the buttocks, leg, and into the foot. And anywhere along this nerve pathway is where somebody can feel pain. Now, in most cases, the sciatic nerve is felt down the left side of the body, but it can affect the right side too, but rarely it affects bilaterally or both sides. The sciatic nerve is the largest in the entire body, and it's like a branch of a tree, and it fans off into multiple directions down into the leg. The sciatic nerve pain can affect the lower back, it can affect the hip, it can affect the buttocks, it can affect the groin, it can affect the leg and the foot. Again, anywhere down that pathway, it can be coming from the sciatic nerve itself. Again, and it originates in the low back. Now, sciatica can cause hip and groin pain because the nerve roots that are part of the sciatic nerve are connected to the nerves that go into the hip and groin area. Sciatic nerve pain can range from mild to intermediate to chronic and debilitating. It can be very severe. It can lead to muscle weakness, sensory, fire, sensory pain, numbness. It can affect sensation, movement, strength, and the severity is very, very widespread. Sciatic nerve can feel like sharp shooting sensations or zapping down the nerve. It can be very dull and achy. It can be a feeling of tightness and compression, and it can be very different for any, any any individual patient. And unfortunately, people with uh, experience sciatica very often experience flare-ups where the symptoms may intensify and then they may kind of go back and, and kind of get better. And it's this unusual or, un, or intermittent approach is the most common where things that a patient can potentially perform and do, which can cause sciatic pain to have more effects. Now, by far, the most common cause of sciatic pain is com nerve compression. Nerve compression in the lumbar spine from something, either the bones being missed out of alignment, it could be a result of disc herniation compressing the nerves, bone spurs that are compressing the nerves, spinal stenosis that's compressing the nerves, spinal tumors that are compressing the nerves, or scoliosis that potentially compressing the nerves. But one thing in common, it's normally a result of nerve compression that's leading out of the spine. Now, sometimes you can compress the sciatic nerve Outside of the spine, it can be compressed through a muscle, and typically it's coming through because the nerve goes right through your glutes. And sometimes if the, new, if the glutes are going through a very significant muscle spasm, it can also squeeze the nerve. And potentially you can compress the nerves in your, in your leg through some kind of injury or trauma. But by far, the number one reason is compression of the nerve tissue coming out of the spinal cord area, and it's a combination of the things that I mentioned. Now, scoliosis causes an unnatural curvature to the spine, and it typically bends and rotates. And this bend and rotation typically exist in the lumbar spine to the left side, which the spine is rotating to the right, meaning rotating into the concavity. So a left bend with a right rotation. And when the scoliosis develops in the lumbar spine, it can affect the sciatic nerve. And this unnatural curvature can start to press and can pinch and irritate these nerves. And like I mentioned, the most common type of sciatica is the left side. And the most common type of lumbar scoliosis is also left lumbar. So sciatic nerve pain is a common complication of a left lumbar scoliosis. It's very common, we tend to see it, but it tends to affect more adult patients than adolescent patients. So we look at patients that have scoliosis that are experiencing sciatica, it's normally not adolescent patients that are going through growth, it's typically older patients or adult patients that the curve has progressed in the adult form as a result of compression. Because like I mentioned, the sciatic pain is typically a result of nerve compression. So once scoliosis becomes a compressive force, it can start leading to other issues. In addition is that once the spine's out of alignment, like in a scoliosis or any misalignment issue, it can start affecting the discs, like scoliosis can have a disc problems, scoliosis can lead to have spinal degeneration, and all these things can start to affect the nerve in a negative way. Now sciatica itself, really is in a condition, but it's more like referring to a bunch of symptoms that could be associated with compression of the sciatic nerve. So even though it's a diagnosis, the patient has a sciatica, don't think that you caught something. Sciatica isn't something that you, ca that you catch. It's something that's a result of compression to a nerve. And the diagnosis of sciatica is just a bundle of symptoms that are categorized by compression of the sciatic nerve. Sciatic nerve pain can be very severe, but the first step in addressing 
what's what's the nerve pain is to addressing what's causing it. And most of the time, it's compression of the nerve in the lumbar spine. And as a result of things that we mentioned, and alignment tends to be the biggest issue because when the spine's out of alignment, all the other things like stenosis, degeneration, disc herniation, all are a result of these things which can lead to compression of the nerve tissue. So therefore, most cases we're looking at what's causing it, but we're looking at what we can do to realign the spine. Like in a case with scoliosis, if they have a significant curvature in the lumbar spine, we're looking at what we can do to improve the curvature. Because if you can improve the alignment, typically you can start decompressing the nerve tissue. And if you can start decompressing, which should be the number one thing that you're trying to do in a patient with, with sciatica, is that you can really start improving and resolving symptoms that patients experience as a result of the compression. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you have any questions about this topic or other scoliosis questions, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish new videos just like this.